Hi everyone, my name is Lily and I'm the book blogger behind Utopia State of Mind and I've been seeing on the internet a lot of stuff recently about how people read more and like tips to read more I guess and as someone who read 42 books in May and also as someone who generally reads probably anywhere from I want to say each of my last three years have been over 300 books uh, I just thought I'd weigh in, you know? I first want to preface this though by saying, obviously I read, read a ton, but I want to preface this by saying a lot of things first of all. The first one is, it doesn't matter how much you read to be counted as a reader. You can read nothing the entire year, never even finish a book, and if you consider yourself a reader, you still are a reader. If you still love reading, you are a reader. I feel like we see this conversation about tips to read more as if like you're not a proper bookworm if you're not reading all the time and you're not like posting all these wrap-ups of all these books you're reading and I've also felt like that's really reflected in the conversations that I've had with my IRL friends as well when I talk about things I've read and they're like oh yeah like I like to read but I haven't really read that much so I don't know how I feel about it like I don't know if I'm a reader anymore and that kind of breaks my heart I think if you love reading and if you enjoy reading you are a reader so I just wanted to first off say that second off I wanted to say that I have um not a lot of hobbies I feel like and I don't watch a lot of movies and tv shows I'm really bad at balance. Actually, let me just preface that. I'm really bad at balance. When I find something that I love, I'm like in it 100%. And that's where I am with reading, honestly, at this moment. It will change in my life. It has to change, honestly. I've been very vocal on this um, YouTube channel about my struggles with like coping mechanisms and using kind of reading as an escape and reading as an escape for anxiety like especially for me that really works but it's also bad because it means that it, it's just like a lot of things honestly um I guess it's bad as well because it has this kind of um guilt complex now when I'm not reading and I think also as someone who like reviews books for an audience, I feel like there can also be a lot of guilt upon that as well. Um, and not reading and not being participating, not having reviews, not making content. I'm all over the internet, honestly. Um, so I have a lot of like disclaimers, I guess, about this video. And also I'm not, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not saying to do exactly what I'm doing. I want to, I want to make that clear. I'm not saying to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm saying if you like pieces of what I'm saying, if you like tips I have, definitely do that. But like, don't be like, oh, now she's saying that I also have to read X amount of books and I also have to have a very difficult relationship with um, self-care and mental health and keeping myself balanced and also happy. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do, don't do what I do, okay? Uh, I'm working through my own stuff on this side. I feel like you can have this idea that, oh my god, she reads, like, so much. Um, wow. And then also, there's very much of a flip side to it. I don't want to talk about that. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm off on a tangent. I don't want to necessarily talk about that in this video. I can if people are interested. But, um, there's stuff going on behind, behind this and behind the numbers that I share in my reading wrap-ups. Which is also, I guess something that you should know too, right? Like, I feel like when we're seeing this, the goal is to read a lot. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean that, and that doesn't necessarily mean that when you read a lot, you'll also have books you love. You could read a lot and have a lot of, like, books you don't love, right? So, lots of disclaimers. I probably can think of a whole, a whole bunch of other disclaimers, but those are the first disclaimers. The, um, another disclaimer, I'm reading from my notes, another disclaimer, is that I personally, as a human, work very well with order and structure and schedule. I personally schedule my reading. I know that a lot of people are mood readers, and I also know that scheduling reading doesn't work for everyone. So obviously, please keep that with mind when you read my stats, when you read all of them. Like, I thrive off of planning. I thrive off of being like, oh, I'm gonna read this much per day and then I'll finish this book then and I'll be able to read this. And I have like the whole week scheduled out beforehand. That is just what fuels me. That's also honestly what quiets the voices in my head, which tell me that I'm not doing enough, which tell me that I'll never finish, that I'll like not have all these commitments, 
um, fulfilled, you know, about reviews, blog tours, etc. Like that's personally what helps me. It also personally what hurts me when I have these guilt complexes and these guilt spirals that I fall into and I'm like, oh, I haven't read it, I'm so behind, you know. Take that with a grain of salt. Not everyone can do that and not everyone thrives off of that. But personally, I thrive off of planning that helps me. I'm trying to also put in a little bit of like, you need to take care of yourself kind of voice. Um, anyway, those are the things I wanted to disclaim. And so what are my actual tips, you might ask. The first one, which is a tip that I'm going to see a lot, and I have already seen a lot, which is audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks when I am um, commuting. I listen to audiobooks when I'm doing the dishes, which I have to do after this filming session. I listen to them when I take bookstagram photos. I listen to them a lot, so I definitely think that helps my reading count. But for me, it also helps like motivate myself to do things I don't like to do, like wash my makeup brushes. I love putting on makeup, but I don't love cleaning up after putting on makeup, just like I don't love cleaning up after doing bookstagram shoots. So it kind of helps me incentivize um, doing things I don't want to do. But I also know that audiobook listening to isn't for everybody. I know that some people find it very distracting or they feel like they can't absorb the, s the story. Um, yeah, I also listen to audiobooks at one and a half times speed or like 1.2 to 1.5 just because for me, I find myself not being able to concentrate on it if it's going slow enough that I can speak it or that I would if I was reading it. It's just me. I feel like if I hear it as a brisk conversation, then something in my brain is like, oh, I have to listen. Like, some things are happening. My next tip, I guess, is to switch genres and formats. I don't really feel like I've seen this tip a lot, but I think it's helped me to make sure that I'm switching. I'm not going through a week-long thing if I'm only reading fantasies. I really like when my brain and my heart uh, can switch genres and switch age groups and switch formats. Well, what I mean is like a physical book versus an ebook versus an audiobook versus a graphic novel. Those are what I mean by switching types of formats. This kind of keeps it fresh in my mind. It keeps me like excited to go back to it, especially if I'm feeling a little bit of a burnt out reading of only ebooks or only physical books. This kind of helps me keep balanced, and because I'm more balanced, it's easier for me to read and feel a little bit less burnt out, I guess, with reading. Switching age groups, so switching adult romance, adult fantasy, YA books, middle grade books. Switching to the age groups around also helps because I think there are different conventions for genres and for age groups in terms of pacing, in terms of language, in terms of world building. So if you find yourself kind of struggling with any one of those things, switch up the age group, um, see if that helps, switch up the format and switch up the genre. Genres also have certain conventions in terms of romance books with happily ever afters or happily for nows, in terms of fantasy books, you know, in terms of maybe cliffhangers, in terms of heavy world building, in terms of all of these different things. So switching up genres I think also will help you. So that's my second tip. My third tip is to make the time. For me, throughout my whole life, but also throughout the last years that I've been book blogging, I've been through a variety of different jobs, been studying, like been through a lot of different formations, and what I've consistently done is actually just made time to read. This sounds super simple, but it's not. It's about creating the intention and the space to read. So what that means is me, you know, before work, waking up half an hour early to get in a little bit of reading, um, done or to get in a little bit of yeah just get, get a little bit of reading and done and start off with a little bit of like oh serotonin or a little bit of angst and then at night I'll read an hour before bed I have carved out reading times where I'm kind of like do not talk to me this is my reading time so it's about making time in your schedule um, for that also reading during the commute maybe if you can I know I know some people can't read on trains or uh, in cars not in cars I mean um, like moving vehicles um, or maybe for example if you're driving maybe you can't listen to an audiobook it's too distracting so that's also making time but also what I mean is like setting the intention to read and also making that space for yourself um, and saying this is my space to read uh, and then having that put in a routine. So establishing a reading routine, I think, is also half of the tip, I guess. And making this, okay, I'm going to read X and these times, and that's my schedule. Kind of like scheduling if you're going to the gym for a workout. Schedule your reading workout. Um, and then the last tip, 
which is the tip I struggle the most with, so if you have any suggestions, leave them down below, is limiting your guilt. Just because you've scheduled time for your reading, in, if your mind is like, no, I'm out, check, check me, I'm out, you can watch bookish TikToks. You can do something else. It's about setting the time and the space and being like, am I in this headspace to read? Just know that if you're not, don't feel bad about it. Try to limit your guilt. That's what I wrote on my paper, limit guilt. If you have, as I said, this is the one that I struggle the most with, especially because I create these very elaborate week long reading schedules. And so I'm kind of like, oh, I have to read extra today because I didn't read as much yesterday. And you know, the guilt really gets to me. It, it really gets to me. So this is something that I'm struggling the most with, limiting my guilt and knowing that it's okay if you don't finish that book. Just sit with that. It is okay if you don't finish that book. It's okay if you don't read today. Um, that's the one I'm struggling the most with. Uh, but those, that that's my tip as well, to kind of work on having a healthy, productive, and good feeling relationship with reading. Also something I'm struggling with. So those are my tips. Huge disclaimers at the beginning, obviously. But then I tried to give you four useful tips. I'm sorry, I tried to think of a fifth one. Maybe they were like 4.5, you know, 2.5 things. So let's just call it five. Let's call it five tips um, to help you read more if you want to read more. Okay, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found any of these tips useful. If you care and want to know about how I structure my reading weeks and how I structure my reading and specifically my Trello board, how I structure my Trello board of eARCs and ARCs, I can make a video about that because I love organization. So if you want to know, please also let me know down below. And I hope you have a really great reading day, week, month, year. If you read nothing, if you read a lot, if you start a book, you don't finish it, whatever. You are a reader. Happy, welcome to the happy reader space. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.